Hey folks, welcome back to My Kitten Reads. I'm Eleanor and this is a mini review in celebration of NADOC Week. Um, for those of you who may not be Australian and may not know what NADOC Week is, we're at the end of it at the moment, but NADOC Week is basically where we celebrate the fact that we have the oldest living culture on, the, on Earth. Um, so that's Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture. Um, it's despite the trauma of colonization, it's still practiced and still lived every day. And it has been so for at least 80,000 years, if not over a hundred thousand years, depending on the evidence that you're looking at. So yeah, so this is a book that I finished reading this week, yesterday, in fact, um, and it's appropriate for NADAC week. It is this, my dad gave it to me for Christmas. It is, uh, Bruce Pascoe's Dark Emu Black Seeds. Agriculture or Accident. It's a little book. It's about a novella length, about 156 pages plus um, like references and stuff. It's non-fiction. As you can see, it's won a whole bunch of awards in Australia um, and Dad really loved it and I really enjoyed it too. It's basically an argument that Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are thought of in most circles as hunter-gatherers and Bruce Pascoe is asking arguing that actually at colonization they were not hunter-gatherers um, and the evidence for that is at, not only in the archaeology um, and in what's left but the evidence is in the writings of the colonial Australia. He actually goes back to a whole bunch of journals and letters and all that kind of stuff from the first contact explorers, from the first colonizers in various areas and he sees that often they will describe like a whole bunch of Aboriginal women harvesting a yam field or um, storage gr storage rooms full of grain or buildings and towns that could fit like, you know, 30 or 40 people in one building kind of thing or fish traps that go on for miles and are made of stone and are interlocking and actually control the waterways. All this permanent sort of stuff and agriculture, not hunter-gathering, um, so he goes through um, and he looks at, you know, he looks at the use of grain. He looks at the use of meat and how uh, animal stocks were managed. Um, and he looks at the use of storage and so how they stored um, food. Um, and they did store food, you know. Um, there's r r r r reports from, you know, people like, I want to say Burke and Wills, but, you know, the explorers who just happened to stumble upon like a ton of stored grain and they just take it and then they go and say that you know in the next page they'll say something about you know the the primitiveness of the local people or the fact that they're hunter gatherers and it's like no they've just got you've just raided this storehouse of grain um so yeah and it looks at the way that um how do i say it the way that spirit, spirituality and culture impact on that and prove that, you know, it was actually an intense agrarian society. It just worked differently than anywhere else on earth. Um, and the fact that we have had this culture that has lived for 80,000 years with no evidence of long-term conflict, of possessiveness, of, you know, there was, there was conflict. But it didn't last and there were there were there was law and there were rules about how you dealt with it and how people were punished and it lasted this culture lasted for eighty thousand years. It wasn't an and that's basically his his argument is that it wasn't a hunter gatherer culture. But people even now in academics ignore the evidence that we have. You know, the evidence is there, like he quotes so many letters and journals from the time who say, who show evidence of this settled culture and then ignore it in the next paragraph and therefore academics ignore it. And the other thing I found really interesting about it is that he actually points out that there's a lot of research that should be done on this topic, particularly on the plants and animals and the methods that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people used because they could actually be really useful now because in areas where traditional Western farming has fallen away because the land is not built for it, there could actually be economically viable ways, if we go back and we research the way the Indigenous Australians did it, of actually creating a new market and a new sustainable food source. And, and I think that's really important and really quite hopeful 
in that if people will actually fund this research, if people will fund the scientists to go and look at how it was traditionally done, we could actually really improve our lot. We could improve the way that we use our land and um, improve our economy. Um, but yeah, so I actually found it a really interesting read. I really recommend if you can pick it up, pick it up and have a look. It is only about 156 pages, so it's not a long read. It's not hugely dense. Um, I understood it pretty well, um, you know. So yeah, I really, really recommend Dark Emu by Bruce Pascoe. And I'm actually looking forward to, at the end of this month, I'm going to see Bangara Dance Theatre do their latest performance, which is called Dark Emu and is actually inspired by this book. So I'm really, Looking forward to seeing how these topics are represented on stage as art. So um, yeah, that was pretty much my my Nate Up Week review. I really hope you enjoy it and I really recommend you pick this book up. Um, let me know if you have read this book because I'd really like to hear what other people think about it. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye.